the Nile Crocodile. One of the most powerful and terrifying reptiles on our Earth. In this area of Africa, they call them flat dogs. I'm surrounded by a hundred or so beautiful Nile Crocs. And I tell you what, it's really easy to love the African lion, the elephants, Australia's koalas, and the bears, and all the cute and cuddlies. I'm going to show you an animal that is one of the hardest to love, but I would hope that I take you right fair smack into their household and you can see the beauty of the flat dogs of Zambia. It's the end of the dry season, and the rivers of Central Africa have dried right out. It doesn't get much drier than this, and it's the peak of the dry that I've come here for, a congregation of big animals. Thousands of crocs are squeezing into less and less water with every other species that make their homes in the river. The biggest and most dangerous is the hippopotamus. When they share water with the Nile crocodile, it's an explosive mix. The pressure for space increases the danger and creatures that normally coexist happily are driven too close for comfort. And it's the hippos who resent it most. Don't you cows get too grumpy now. More human deaths are caused by hippos than any other wild animal in all of Africa. Hippos are Africa's second largest mammal. So behind me, probably got around about 30 cows, one big bull over 20, and there's a couple of younger bulls. They reach sexual maturity, which happens at around seven to 10 years of age. And there's a couple of bulls out on the perimeter. They're not allowed in near the girls, and that's fair enough. Wow, did you see that? Now that one in front there, that's the biggest bull male. He'd be well over 20 years of age, and that's a subordinate male. And he's just making sure that that young bloke doesn't get in on his girl. I'm just gonna have to wait here for a minute. It's too unsettled. You can see there's fights starting to erupt everywhere. Here we go. Hey, I don't want anything to do with this, guys. They're still going. How's the way they ran? Bang! Those tusks are thick as my wrist. Woo! Gee, they go at it. Often they'll damage each other so, so severely they'll just get up on the bank or die in the water. It's a harsh time of year now. They're all stuck in here in the peak of the dry. That's when they mate. That's when they get into disputes. A lot of them die. Hey, this hippo's only got one ear. Probably an injury from a fight.
riverbanks are littered with the carcasses of dead hippos, some from fights in the herd and many from attacks by predators. Steve's going ashore to set up and wait for the inevitable, the Nile crocodiles moving in to feed. This is it, fingers crossed. You can see those, those really distinct slides all the way around the carcass, and they're just sitting out, just sitting out wide. They know I'm coming. I'm just going to go round here, scout round, get into a camouflage position. This is it. We spotted the crocs as we were paddling downriver, but they sensed me coming and moved away. They probably know I'm still there, but what croc couldn't resist so much, Tucker? Yes! Most of the year, crocs and hippos live in harmony, but in the peak of the dry season, there's tension over territory. Unbelievable. This is what I'm here for. This is exactly why I'm here. I've got a congregation of crocs, all different sizes, all the way up and over 10 feet. Probably 20 or 30 of them there. Here we go. One's going in. As soon as that first one hits, he'll go in, and if he bites or gets near the carcass, shakes, shows any motion that even looks like he's feeding, the others are gonna follow. And together, they'll tear a little piece off, swallow it down. These ones are taken small pieces. They're opportunistic animals, and you can see by the size how fat they are in the belly there. They're well fed. They've been feeding for a couple of days. They attack the abdomen of the hippo and tear out the soft parts. And then they go for the intestines, pull that out, and then as the flesh rots, they eat it from the guts out. As I look on, more and more crocodiles are attracted by the strong smell of the rotting carcass. Croc numbers just get thicker and thicker. And it's a game of dominance. The bigger ones move in first, whereas the little ones wait their turn. It's this social structure that I find fascinating. And once they've had their fill, they all just dissipate back into the water and then head back into their basking locations. They'll do this day and night. After feeding, the crocs are sluggish. They need to bask in the sun to raise their metabolism so they can digest the massive meal that they've gulped down. Look at the size of the belly on that one. You can see how distended and it's hanging down between its front and back legs. That's a big belly, and it's going to take quite a while in the sun to boost its temperature so as it can digest properly. Here comes another one. They're all coming out to bask. Flat out like a crock in the sun. The end of the day is when we see a whole new set of activities on the river. Hear that commotion? Something's scaring the animals from up on the bank. They're all charging back in. And here it is. It's a lion. They're predominantly nocturnal predators. However, they're opportunistic, just like the crocodiles. I was wondering why he was so skinny. But you can see what's happened is he's had the front part of his jaw broken off. And actually, it's gone. You're missing a part of your jaw, buddy. Hey, how's this? My first Nile crocodile. Happy day, he's only a little tacker. Managed to stick a tooth into me thumb, which is good, bonus. But you can see that bottom jaw. Quite debilitating to him. But he's been able to get enough feed. It's an old injury. I reckon it'd be a couple of years old. He'd only be around about three years old, I reckon. But he's in fat enough condition. He's a bit slow on land, this boy. A little bit too slow. Oh, you're all right, mate, you're all right. Now, have a look at his eyes. You can see his eyes there. Crocodiles have got great nocturnal vision. Their pupil widens right out, and their eye almost goes completely black as the pupil goes out, and that enables them to see very well. Oh, there's his other membrane there, watch this. See that membrane coming from the front? Across, watch this. Come on, mate. 
There it is. Ah. Now, that membrane ah. is like putting on a set of goggles. They can see under the water. Even in this dark, dirty water that we've got here, they can actually see silhouettes. Ah. So it's like putting on a pair of goggles. Ah. His teeth, plenty sharp enough. Ah. Gave the old croc under a bit of a hurry up. Have a look inside his ah. mouth. Ah. You can see that flap. He's ah. crying away. And that ah. flap down in there ah. is a valve. So it's like a modified tongue. So he can grab hold of food, ah. hang onto it in the water, pull it back under, and that ah. valve stops water from going down. And I reckon I've got this planned. If I ever got hit by a big Nile croc, I'll be able to get my arm down inside, ah. open that valve up, they'll fill up with water and they've got to spit me out. <laughs> yeah, it's good in theory. Ah. Hear him crying ah. as he struggles? Ah. Crocodiles have an incredible... Ah. Hear that vocalisation. Ah. So this is a little three-year-old, and they learn this vocalisation as soon as they hatch. They, yeah, yeah, just like that, inside the egg. Isn't that amazing? And that's one of the things that I wanted to experience with the Nile crocodile, is this vocalisation, which they hold throughout their entire life. Of course, their voice breaks, and it's more of a... And a... Yeah. Here, my roar's got the old hippos going. Yeah, and you got your little squeaky noise too. He's doing that because he feels fear. So instinctively he's crying, hoping his mama or dada is going to come along and kill me. But what do you reckon, mate? You want to go back out there and hunt some fish? Well, come on, sweetheart. Better go back out in the water before a hippo comes along and gives me a big chew. Go on then, mate. The trick is to get your hand away pretty quick. Go on then, quick. Yeah, mission accomplished. My first Nile croc. Woohoo, you beauty. Back in daylight, it's again safe to continue our adventure on the water, where we have the best chance of spotting wildlife. Everything has to come to the river to drink, including elephants, and by taking it easy, we see it all. Downstream, we're finding parts of the channel too shallow for paddling, and Steve has to drag the canoe through. We've spotted a big herd of elephants up ahead and need to go ashore and find a good vantage point to see where they're heading. It's a typical elephant family group, predominantly females, and in this case with a couple of young adult males who've attached themselves to the herd, either for safety or just for the company. You can see the way they've got their trunks up like this. They're sniffing the air, trying to see if there's any potential dangers around. Luckily enough, I'm downwind, they can't smell me. You can see that. She's the matriarch of the herd, and she's got a little two-year-old there. So throughout this herd's entire life, that matriarch will take the herd to and fro, really good feeding areas. And all of the adults are a combination of mothers and daughters, sisters and aunts. And they've got babies varying ages, from little one-year-olds all the way up to sub-adults. When males reach maturity, they leave the family group and only rejoin herds briefly for mating. Or when they're young, they'll just hang around for a while. Suddenly, there's a reaction, and the whole herd follows the matriarch's lead. Everyone sticks together, except for the two young adult males. They're not part of the family group, and they just keep playing. There's very little that can hurt a full-grown elephant, but the babies are vulnerable. 
and in the dry season, the rivers attracted a lot of lions and other predators. Got some lions coming. So you can see the matriarch out in the front. And then that girl, she always takes up the rear. That's her job. And she's the next dominant female, but she hasn't got a youngster at the moment, so she's got the critical role of bringing up the rear. That matriarch knew the lions were close long before we had the slightest clue. Beautiful stuff. Really beautiful. One of the things I'm really interested in seeing is Nile crocodile nest sites. I'm gonna have to constantly be thinking about my surroundings. I don't want to make a mistake around hippos. And they're on me, always watching and ever present. This is an excellent spot to look for nest sites. Check these out. You can see these are entry exits from the water. Fair sized crocs too, up over eight feet. Almost 10 foot, a couple of them. Judging by this area here, it'll be a nest site. Definite nest site. You can see where these girls have been coming up out of the water. And all of these big patches here, these big slides here, is where they've been sitting, protecting their eggs. Have a look at this. She's just sitting on the bar. I'm gonna sip around here. She's just sitting up on her nest now, sunning herself. You can see her sitting on the bank, right up against the edge of the water, with her mouth, her teeth displayed straight into the water. As I sneak up over the top, I start to understand exactly what she's doing. Something's upsetting her. It's a Nile monitor, a big goanna. They eat croc eggs. And sometimes I lose my senses and I run in after it. What a mistake, there's a huge female there. But then I notice something else sitting under the bank. Have a look at this. Ooh, danger, danger. Have a look at these bubbles coming up here. Now, with any luck, if any crocodiles come in behind me, they'll hit this stick before they get to me. So at least I'll know that I've been bitten. <laughs> oh, yeah, unreal. I'd love to show you this little crocodile. Here he is. Hey, little fella. Look at this. Hey, little fella. Oh, you're a strong ass. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got to get out of the water. Shh, be quiet, be quiet. Well, let go of that stick. <laughs> what a little beauty! And he's fat as mud. Check out how fat his tail is. Hey, little one. Isn't that amazing how the Nile crocodiles will actually dig in underneath the bank there to seek a nice, cool, moist refuge? Now, this little one, of course, he would, he would get taken up in the food chains. Big ones would eat him. But he's in perfect condition. He's a strong little fella. And that beautiful vocalization. Beautiful, man. Look at him. He's a little ripper. Yeah, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. No biting. That cry is going to go up 100 meters each side. And uh, that's a distress signal. And if Mama, or even worse, Papa, is around, he could come in and whew, defend his little one.
As we head further downriver, the crocs are even more concentrated than before, and there's a real feeling of tension. Another nest area, and another lizard looking for eggs. Hi! Hi, boy. He's gonna bite you. Hey! You're all right, you're all right. Settle down. Have a look at this. No biting, no biting. <laughs> He's a naughty little Nile monitor. And he's biting. You can understand why he bites. Nile monitors have got a real reputation for being bitey little lizards. And he wants to bite me, no doubt about that. As small as he is, if you can imagine, this guy is a really good predator. Real good. In fact, they grow to be the second largest reptilian predator along these river systems. And these guys take their toll on crocodile eggs. Don't you bite me on the face now. That's one of their main food sources. <laughs> All right, guys. If I look a little nervous, it's because I'm in prime crocodile territory. Hey, hey, settle down, mate. Settle down. No biting there. No biting. Have a look at this croc slide here. All right, so just in here, this will be a female nest site. And so I'm a little bit vulnerable. Luckily enough, this girl isn't all that protective. There's one popping up just there. It's her, all right. I'm gonna have to move back. She's coming, she's coming. Just gotta get back from the water's edge. This girl's coming straight over here. Come on, mate, you go back in your hole. Guinea fowl. Paddling along quietly in the canoe enables me to get a whole new perspective on the wildlife right down at the water's edge. Vultures, and they're circling. When they circle like this, you know they're onto something. One of my wildest boyhood dreams was getting myself in close enough that I was sharing the carcass with vultures. You can see the hungry vultures jumping around. I'm gonna try and sneak in a little closer, because right behind that carcass is a whole stack of crocs just starting to line up in a bit of an encirclement, and they're gonna zoom in. They might not come in the Savo, but they're sure gonna hit us tonight, I reckon. I reckon if I try and walk like a vulture, they don't seem to be flying off. Gee, they're tolerant to the heat. The vultures have to wait for their turn to feed. A larger predator has been here first and has opened up the abdomen of this hippopotamus. This makes it easier picking for the vultures, but if the lion or crocodile decides to return, the vultures will have to leave until the carcass is again abandoned. The vultures will pick the bones clean until finally the insects move in. They've got no real thick feathers from their shoulders up their neck and over their head. That allows them to dig their head right inside the bloody carcass without getting all soaked up with blood. I can't believe I'm this close to these vultures. And they don't care too much about me. All they care about is having a bit of a squabble and getting in there and tearing a chunk of carcass out. Even among vultures, there's a pecking order with dominant animals calling the shots. seems so pleased that he's top dog among the vultures that he even forgets to take his turn feeding. Look at him. He's so proud. The end of another day on the river, and again we have to be totally alert. The crocs are keen for an evening meal, and they're getting too interested in the canoe. The hippos are actively preparing for a night of grazing ashore. In the water, they're fast and powerful, and on land, they can run surprisingly quickly. They're moving everywhere in the river, and we never know exactly where or when a massive body will surge up under the boat. Even at the best of times, it's dangerous on the water in fading light. 
But when the water space is cramped, we're not only risking being attacked as intruders, but also being caught up accidentally in a clash between animals competing for space. Starting to get a little too dark. Plenty of croc eye shine around. Probably better I get off the water. Do a bit of spotlight up here. Oh, here we go. A lion. Look at this. A young adult male lion. You can tell it's young by its short mane. And there's a female. She's in beautiful condition. There's a croc right behind her. It's in the gully. Wow. That'd have to be about 11 or 12 footer. You can see this channel that it's in. It's going from this tributary, which is drying out, and heading for the river. Here she goes. How's that? They can run really quick using the tail. She's just going through this channel down to the river. She's in deeper water. Look at it, she's under. Beautiful. And into the river. A new day, and we're about to be part of one of the most amazing wildlife scenes we've ever witnessed. It's hard to believe there can be so many hippos jammed together in such a short stretch of river. Normally, you'll see about 40 of these massive animals in a single herd. But here, there are literally thousands. They're agitated, and they're making me really nervous. The hippos are just starting to get way too thick. So it's getting way too dangerous for the canoe. I'm going to have to leave it here and carry on by foot. I've grown up with crocodiles. I know I'm like the back of my hand, the signs, the postures. I don't find them all that dangerous, but these hippos are getting a little too stirred up. I've had to leave the canoe far too dangerous in this section of the river. Right in this bend here, you've got over a thousand hippos, all crammed into one chunk of water. They've all moved into the center. They've heard me coming and they're not happy about my presence, but I'm not about to share water with them. It's far too dangerous. This grunting and bellowing is all about dominance. There's only one dominant male in each herd, and to win the right to keep their harem, they have to fight off challenges throughout their entire life. They only ever come together like this in the dry season, and when herds meet, competing males are driven closer and closer together. All of the hippos have got scar tissue where they've been hit by each other's tusks. You can see this pot of hippos is moving away from me. I'm in no danger here, I'm up on a high bank. If you go down into their territory, you've got to play by their rules. And their rules are simple, don't be in my water. Have a look at that for a tusk. And that is their weaponry. It's like a piece of steel. Their heads can weigh up to half a ton. And their body weight can get out around two tons. Woo, big animals. And a lot of them are carrying scar tissue where they've gone into territorial disputes, carved each other up a bit, and mostly that heals up, except for the old animals. And they may get such an injury that they'll die in times to come. You can understand why they have a fair few territorial disputes. Getting all confined and crowded up like that, it's like a New York subway. You get a little boisterous and a little all penned up. <laughs> While the males fight, spending their lives trying to work out who's going to be the boss bull, the females, the cows, are looking after their calves. There 
a big mammal, never to be underestimated. They can run faster on land than me, get them in shallow water, and they can go fast as a motorboat. And they're power. They're a big, powerful animal. You think with those small, dumpy-like legs and that big, fat-looking body, that they'd be big old oaks. Not at all. Their speed and power is immense. Check this out. Stampede. It started for no apparent reason, wow. and then just finished as quickly as it started. These massive aggregations are regular events. The hippos only do it because there's no choice. But for us, it was a magnificent, once-in-a-lifetime spectacle. Another Nile water monitor. A big one. I'm gonna have to be quick. These things are fast. One thing to grab the lizard, but I'm in crocodile territory. Trap right up close next to the water. I'm gonna use this root to try and get back up the embankment. How's this got him? Have a look at this. What a beautiful lizard. You're all right, mate. I'm not sure who's got who. Let go now, mate. Let go there, buddy. Have a look at this. The claws. I tell you what, they've got a great set of claws and they need them. They raid birds' nests, they dig up crocs' eggs, and you can see this one here. This is a full-grown Nile monitor. Beautiful lizard, beautiful set of armory. <laughs> they dig in by crikey. And have a look at that head structure. Now, he's not an aquatic lizard. I guess you'd call him semi-aquatic. They live in and around the water. They swim like a crocodile, under and on top of the water. They can't hold their breath for over a couple of minutes, so they've got to come back up. The Nile croc and monitor are the two largest reptiles. Now, this bloke relies on the Nile crocodile, A, for protection, and B, a food source. This bloke, he'd pick up neonate crocodiles like they're going out of fashion. Any little tackers that he could get, whack, swallow them down while they're still kicking. And of course, the eggs. They love to eat croc eggs. That's one of their favorite food sources. And they whooshing, whooshing, use that forked tongue to locate a viable nest, dig down. Mind you, they've got to beat mummy. You can see here, that's his ears. They've got quite good hearing, nostrils right on top of his head, and their eyesight is acute, especially for movement. Anything moves within a couple of hundred metres, they'll pinpoint it and go at it. Have a look at this tail. I've got to, I've got to impress upon you just how wild that tail is. Look at that. So that makes him nearly six feet long, and you can see the compression in that tail. See how it's really thin up the top, powerful tail. Very powerful swimmers. And you know they shed their skin, just like other reptiles. You can see his skin coming off here. Starting to shed his skin. And he'll have some beautiful skin coloration under there when he sheds all his skin off. He thinks that by playing dead, look at him. He's playing dead, this lizard. What a great technique. The first thing they do is fight like fury. And then when they think they're beaten, they play dead. Isn't that interesting? Well, thanks very much, mate, for sharing this time with me. One other point that I didn't tell you is these things have teeth, like sharks, razor-sharp teeth, and they lacerate. I mean, they can grab a snake and tear it in half. A young crocodile, bite it, tear it in half. No problem at all. Razor-sharp teeth. You wouldn't want to get bitten because not only have they got razor-sharp teeth, they carry a few bacterias in their mouth, which would certainly inflict a nasty injury. There you go, mate. Yes! Big Nile monitor. Woohoo! As we get past the giant herds of hippos, we get into the thickest number of crocodiles I've ever seen. This is what sets the Nile crocodile apart from any other crocodile species in the world. 
Hundreds, probably thousands of them congregated. And here's what's attracting them. A hippo carcass. It's probably a casualty of the fighting. You can see the bloody marks around its neck. Looks like tusk wounds. I'm gonna crawl up on my belly to get right there, smack into the action. This is what I've come to see, the wild behaviour of the Nile crocodile. They've got an incredible social structure where they'll congregate around a food source. This is it. I've got a sneak right up there on my belly. They're a little nervy about my presence. I use my backpack to break up the formation of my body. It's working. Look at this. I'm close. This croc's got to be nearly 14 feet in length. And I'm less than 10 feet from it. Check it out. Crocodiles as far as the eye can see. There's probably 50 or more mounting in front of me right around the carcass. And there's another 50 at least out back from them. Out of all the reptiles in the world, the Nile crocodile has the most complex social structure. Look at them, tearing into the entrails of the hippo. Look at them, they're coming in. There must be a hundred crocodiles in on it. They're huge. Look at the size of them compared to me. They make me look like a dwarf. like a clash of dinosaurs. You go, fight, fight. It's only a small dispute. There's no blood spilled. In amongst all this turmoil and commotion and thrash and jaws and heads hitting together, it's wild, but it's organised. Clashing heads, clashing teeth. This huge frenzy of death rolls. This is the social structure at its peak. <gasps> Out of all that, and not one croc is bleeding. There's not a croc in this mob that's under 10 feet. Look at the size of them. Dinosaurs. How's the way they come alongside and tear about each other's mouth? Unreal. You know, this looks wild. It looks so wild, all these dinosaurs mixing it up. Evolution at its peak. Oh, look at this, look at this. Crikey. It just looks like they're going at it. Oh. Heck, the carcass is going. They're so preoccupied feeding that they don't even notice the hippo carcass is floating away. Don't worry, they'll pick it up later. Check it out. How's this? They don't even care I'm here. They, they've got no idea of it. Shit, look at this.
This has been the most awesome thing in my entire life. Have a look at this. Check out behind me. If I was James Bond, I could run over. Check him out, like stepping stones. The funny thing is, in the fight, they forgot the hippo carcass has floated off. It's floating way down the river there now. But don't worry, they'll track it down and find it, and they'll eat again. The feast of the Nile crocodile. It's all gone a little bit tranquil now. Look at them. They've all settled down. They're all quiet as... Oh, boy. Hey, unbelievable. This has been the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. The most fun. Now that they've finished feeding, watch this. They'll all go up onto the bank and start basking. Get a bit of this sunlight, get back up to 30 degrees Celsius and start digesting. The favourite thing of the crocodile to do. And have a look at that belly, it's bulging. I'm in paradise. Yes! <laughs> have a look at this. Right fair smack amongst a hundred or more Nile crocodiles. Incredible stuff. I'm not being threatened. They're not an evil, ugly monster that just waits to kill man. In actual fact, here on the continent of Africa, there's millions of people that share the territory of this magnificent species every single day and night. It's very unfortunate when someone gets killed by a croc, and I feel so sorry for them. Human life is very important, but I would hope that I've taken you here right into the, the territory of the flat dog of Zambia to see the beauty and the social structure and the magnificence of this truly beautiful animal.